The Canis Major constellation, also known as the Great Dog, is best visible during the winter months. Sirius, also known as the Dog Star, is the brightest star in the constellation and also the brightest star in the night sky. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our constellation series and a visit to one of the most famous constellations of all, Canis Major. So let's get to it. Close followers of this channel will know apart from Sirius, the blue supergiant star of Adara is another major star within the borders of Canis Major. As the second brightest star in the constellation, it makes the 22nd brightest star in the night sky. A double star system, Adara is one of the most important stars in the history of our solar system. This is because many millions of years ago it was located just 34 light years away and outshone everything bar the moon and the sun in our skies and would have been seen in clear daylight. The two Adara stars are both blue-white supergiants and carry the designation Epsilon Canis Majoris and they're now located about 430 light years from Earth. Canis Major is a relatively average sized constellation and ranks 43rd on the list of constellations as we can see here in the table, covering around 0.92% of the night sky. The constellation is bordered by Monoceros which lies between it and Canis Minor to the north, Pupis to the east and southeast, Columba to the southwest and Lepus to the west. Unsurprisingly, the beautiful constellation contains one of the most famous stars of all, the red hypergiant of VY Canis Majoris, once thought of as the largest star known until it was recently replaced by first UY Scuti and then Stevenson 218. Canis Major also contains the interesting neutron star RXJ0720, which in stark contrast has a tiny, tiny radius of a mere 5 kilometers. Rx is a member of what's known as the Magnificent Seven, a group of neutron stars that are relatively near to the solar system. Measurement of Rx's parallax leads to an estimate of around 1,200 light years distance from our Earth. Its spectrum and temperature appear to be mysteriously changing over several years, and the nature of the changes are unclear, but it is possible that there was an event such as the star's absorption of an accretion disk, which would have indeed made quite a celestial event. Other major stars in Canis Major include Wazen, Mirzam and Eludra. Wazen, or designated Delta Canis Majoris, is a very distant yellow supergiant that's located around 1,800 light years from Earth and is the 36th brightest star in our sky. Wazen is derived from the medieval Arabic Al-Wazen, which means weight in modern Arabic. Interestingly, since 1943, the spectrum of this star has served as one of the stable anchor points by which other stars are classified. Mirzam, ranked 46th brightest, is 560 light years away and a blue giant, possibly the easiest to observe as it forms the foot of the dog which means it's directly to the right of Sirius. Despite being the fourth brightest star in the constellation, it strangely carries the beta designation. Eludra, another blue-white supergiant star, is even further than both Mirzam and Wazen at a very distant 2000 light years from Earth. Eludra shines with an astonishing 105,000 solar luminosities and with a mass of 19 solar masses, Eludra certainly end its life in a supernova blast, probably within the next few million years. Depicting the great dog to Canis Minor's lesser dog, I often find the comparison interesting in the alpha stars of these two constellations also, Canis Major Sirius and Minor's Procyon. Both very close by to us, both are larger than the Sun and both have white dwarf companions. Indeed, without the Canis Major constellation, our night sky would look quite different. Without Sirius, the brightest star would become Canopus, a star located in the constellation of Carina. Additionally, the absence of Adara would mean that there would be no second brightest star in the constellation, and the 22nd brightest star in the night sky would then pass on to Shaula, or Alpha Scorpii. Another interesting location in Canis Major is the open star cluster of NGC 2362, also known as Coldwell 64. The cluster is located around 5,000 light years away and contains over 80 stars and is a relatively young cluster, but it is devoid of star forming gas and dust, indicating that the star formation process has come to a halt. Despite this, many have called it the beautiful cluster due to its bright central star surrounded by other less bright companions as I'm sure you can appreciate in this image. Another nebula in Canis Major is what's known as Thor's Helmet or NGC 2359 to space nerds. A bubble-shaped structure that is formed by the intense ultraviolet radiation from a massive star located in its centre. A wolf rayet star known as WR7, it's thought to be of a pre-supernova stage of evolution. But don't worry, at a distance of an almost eye-watering 11,960 light years away, Thor's helmet will never be more than a beautiful view on a winter's night for our fragile system. 
The nebula is also home to young stars that are still in the process of forming. Canis Major also contains another interesting object such as the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, a small galaxy located around 25,000 light years from the Milky Way, which makes it one of the closest satellite galaxies to our own galaxy. The Canis Major constellation is an important part of our sky. Sirius, Adara, Wazen, Mirzam and Aludra are all significant contributors to the beauty and splendour of it, and their absence would greatly diminish the viewing experience for stargazers. Home to stars from the most giant, like VY Canis Majoris, to the tiniest of all, like the neutron star RX J0720. The great dog, Canis Major, rises in the Northern Hemisphere's winter to follow its mythical leader Orion through the skies, housing some of the most beautiful sights of all, like Thor's helmet and the beautiful Coldwell 64 cluster. One of the most recognised and cherished constellations, let's make the most of this constellation while we can during the remaining winter months before it passes down under to our friends in the south. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so and if you have any other videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life don't forget to let me know in the comments and perhaps next week your idea might show up. Take good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family really well, and I'll see you on the next one.